whatever uh, problems in mechanical engineering, which is something like structural analysis, we have stress analysis, buckling problem, vibration, impact, and other than that, non-structural, we can use it for heat transfer, fluid mechanics, electric or magnetic potentials. Okay, so that is basically what is finite element. It's just a software, it's just a tool. And then, when we talk about finite element analysis, in general, okay, okay this is one, the first lab that, uh, this is my class, I'm teaching MEC 613 Mechanics of Property Material. For my lab work, this is the first class that I introduce students to finite element. Okay, what we need actually, this is based on the case study, the problem. In this case, what we have is so-called as a cantilever beam, where at one beam, we fully fix and the end we put a load for the for the non engineers <laughs> not sure what they can uh, do it. But if you look this, where you can find this, it's actually at the swimming pool. Okay, what we call that the yeah, yeah the diving. So, but in our case, usually the deformation is more. Eh? It's not as bumpy as that board there. Okay? But if it's bumpy, also we can model. But what we use, especially in this um, uh, engineering, if you look there, you can see all the structures there. And some of them we call it beams, some of them, the one we straight we call it like columns and beams. So that is actually what we model. So in this case, I give the student, okay, students, this is the problem. You have a cantilever beam. At one, one end, it is fixed, and the other is a force. You can imagine uh, someone standing there with a load eh, in kilogram. So, I told them that in order to do this final element, you know, what the, 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 the inputs that actually needed is just that in final element, when, when we use the software, what we need is just the, to draw this, the geometry. And then, we can put the material properties here. And also then, what we did is we mesh it. And this will be meshed into smaller elements, so that's where it comes, the names come from, finite elements. Okay? And then we put the loading condition, and this is the load, and then we put the boundary condition. So at least in general for finite element, we need to have five inputs, and for such analysis, the output will be in terms of the displacement, okay? and from the displacement, we can calculate stress. Because in design, stress is one of the important quantity. Okay, because if the, the stress level at that structure higher, greater than the strength of that material, the material will fail. So that is the basis. Okay? And in my class, so I start with them is the first problem is that to simulate the problem, we are looking the maximum displacement. So for example, I gave them the load is 1000 newton and then this is the length okay there's a metal properties we take it as steel okay so once we have all this the input and then the processor the final element software we will calculate we calculate because it's actually what we're developing here although we see like, uh, like visual it's actually mathematical equations so the the software will run and then it will comes in terms of the uh, results visualization. The output also will be in a visual. So when we do the software, it's a visual, but when we run, actually the computer look at as numbers, they, they are calculating it, and after that, they give us again the visual for us to view, right? which I will show you some examples later on. So if whatever the, the input we give, and then we see the output in terms of displacement of stress, that is actually called as finite analysis. It's an analysis. Okay. But, on the other hand, if we want to determine the parameters that can be stand, so that is actually design. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. So, either we use an analysis, or we use design. So, if we have inputs, like our body, we put all the inputs, we see the, the result as analysis. But, let's say you want to restrict something, say so what should be the maximum load that you can stand, so it becomes design. Huh? It becomes a design problem. Apart from that, what the other thing that is important in solving using finite element is that the understanding of the problems. Because, as I said, if you put the wrong boundary conditions, the wrong inputs, then the output will be 
useless tip. So that's the tip. And usually also as a final element, people I have been doing this since 1998 for my masters, we always argue with the experimental people. Okay? So that's when we say this is only visual. Right? This is only uh, on computers. Where's the real thing? So that's why in, in, uh, in that scenario, the experimental guy did win. Because they say, hey, come on. We have this experiment set up. We measure it there. This is physical. This is real. So, but for us, the conventional guy, we have to really tell them, hey, come on. We have compared this and this and this and the results are right. Then only we can, can confidently say that, yes, this is right. So if you look for an element, people ask you, how do you know that your result is right? That is the most challenging to think for you to answer. Okay. So back to that, I started the work with progressive failure of analysis composite material. So that, as again, I said, strength is one of, in, in mechanical engineering, in, in structural engineering, strength is one of important properties. Because the stress value greater than the strength, then the, the, the material or the structure will fail. Okay? And then, to establish all the characteristics for every complex type of phase is very expensive and complicated. And let's say, just imagine something like this. Okay? Let's say you want to test an aeroplane, okay? the crash of aeroplane. So if you want to do it experimentally, okay? the, the good thing, the ideal thing is that you make 20 aeroplanes and then you crash it. One aeroplane costs billions. So that's why this is becomes handy where we can visual this, this kind of phenomena virtually. virtually. So the objective for that is actually for that particular purpose is to develop a final animal program and then to develop the data set for inputs and then why do we develop our own final element program? It's because whatever available commercially might not fit, eh? might not suitable or might not cater what we need today. Because as, as, as you know that research, every day we come up with something new, new equations, so which the software, sometimes they do not have that. So that's why we have to come up with our own software. So this is start of one of the things, eh? because during for my masters, okay, this is some of the the the, 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 the equations, okay? Because uh, the work came when someone in our groups they developed this higher order theory, formation theory, which is this is for composite laminate, which is optic. Okay? For thing, if you, you look at the uh, available commercial software now, the highest that they can go is 5 degree of freedom. Yeah, like for example, our case and CIS. But some of us, they develop a 7 degree of freedom. So because of that, due to that, we cannot simply use the commercial software. We have to come up with that. Okay? And then, I was challenged to come up with a... Okay, the other problem is that all the available uh, failure theories for composite is that you have, if, if, if I can show you, let's say one layer, you have the fibers in this direction, okay, and the matrix, if you are, if you are what, <coughs> familiar with composite, there's fibers and matrix, okay. So, during that time, all the failure theories, they do not have the relation between the matrix and the fiber. So I was challenged to say that why not you come up with any equations that can relate the strength of the matrix and the fiber. So that's where it comes. So that's where from, from previous mathematical models, I try to play around and finally I come up with this. So due to that, I have this, the new theory for plate deformation. I have this new theory for failure model. So I can simulate it using the whatever available time. We have to come up with our own program. So I, I wrote it with the Fortran, uh, during that time, Fortran. So from there, as again I said, first, when you write a program, you must make sure that your program is validated. All the results are correct. So from that, eh, we take one problem, and then we get the maximum deflection here, and we compare with all other parameters. Eh? with our research, uh, the results from other researchers and it's proven that our program is correct in terms of the values. Okay. So then we tried with that. One case is the unit edge tension. 
okay, from that, and then we compare also that model just now with the experiment conducted by earlier researchers, and also we did some plate bending, yeah, plate bending whereby we have a plate, we just put load, yeah, transverse load there, and we see how it breaks, and okay, these are the, just the comparison, the results between the current model and okay, the model by others. Now what interesting is this, okay? we try to simulate, we make the, the simulation by Fortran and from the data there we start plotting this, this is just to show the, the progression of the failure of the composite, of the plate, how it fails. Okay. Um, I think that the best way is other than that is that actually you put this under SEM and then you put the load, you see how it breaks. But this is actually uh, based on our uh, program. This is basically based on our program. We can also simulate the thing. It shows that for composite material, the first load you put, it's, eh, because of the load put, the stiffness will reduce and it can disperse, eh, the breakage can disperse to other laminates or other it's very technical and also it's not very how I say not very interesting because this is all where we plot this using words words okay but later on in 2010 we found that for NCS for NCS in 2010 that work was done somewhere in 2000, early 2000 we found that NCS have provided one built-in failure criteria function. The figures. So we tried to explore, and one of my students did that. So what we did, since we have the results using the photon before, now we try to explore that function in NCS, and then we, we, we simulate the same, problem, same model, and we got the results, and we compared compare this and it seems that yeah it's 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 right so I'm saying that is that there is an easier way now we find an easier way before that we have to write our own program but now using software they have that function and we can still come up with that without the student having to write that own program and early this year some of students just show a one page one page of program that can solve the problem. So the what's what's interesting here is that sometimes we have a problem, we solve it in a hard way, and as time goes by, there are that's a simpler way to solve it. We found a simpler way to solve it that makes our life more easier and it gives you the same results. Okay. Other than that, since before this we are very theoretical, so yeah. what we did is just we start oh, with yeah, some yeah. That's the work. So that is how we progress the works on the finite element related to uh, composite materials. Okay. Apart from that, my interest is to to do finite element or case studies on industrial on industrial problems. So this is one of the case study. And this is actually we got uh, the idea from. Before, before that, they are doing a simulation, eh? simulation on a ballistic impact. Ballistic, that means there's a bullet traveling onto a, a plate. Bullet traveling to a plate. For this, what we did, we just... What we did for this paper, actually... Okay, what we did for this paper, actually, we just changed the shape the trajectory shape into four and also we try to thicken eh? we study the parameter of the thickness of the wall this is using NC for pens what we have here now at first actually I want to try to convert the plate into a composite material unfortunately I don't think we have that because when I try to select composite material properties it's not there it's not in our NC for pens so the, the work stops there. Okay, this is one of the problems also imposed by myself because my, most of my students they are 
mature students, PLK students, eh, they come from industries. So they gave us some their industrial problem. So this is a mini mass power structure. Okay, from the work of this this, this company. Okay, he works there. So this is one if you see that where we put the something like the dish, eh, like SO dish. The uh, uh, what? For the handphone, eh? the handphone tower, though. So actually, they have, eh, apa, apa dia, they have a few design. So now the student they they wanted to study which design would be the, and they just want to study the design, eh? design. So from there, actually, we have three design. I do not know whether you are aware or not. Eh? If you go outside, you can see a tower which carrying that. Actually, we have three designs. Eh? So this is the first. Second and the third design. This is the first, second, and the third. We design that. So what we did is just we model it with the in the computer, finite element, and then we put all the boundary conditions, mental properties, and we start to see the deformation and the stresses. And from there we deduce which is the 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 optimum design. And this. So this one we. Going to present this in the MIT. Okay, this is another case study. This is from Sakura. So they are producing this spring. They are producing this spring. So at their company now, they have a few type of spring. So, so the students select this as their project, and then they start studying. The variation of parameters of the spring. Okay. This can also work like this can also be considered as reverse engineering, and though it does not capture the real image from that. But what we do is also even where we have the real design and then we start manipulating the design and for improvement. So that is also and can be considered as reverse engineering. Okay, so these are the results. Eh? Okay, this is uh, another project which is uh, the company named Suma Engineering. Okay, they are fabricating this the low loader of a pack of a lorry, and also they try to say, uh, we try to be possible to reduce the weight of the low loader. So in this case, they give us the uh, the, the, the uh, drawing, and then from there we start to okay simulate. What happen if we reduce this? What happen if we reduce these rows of this beam here? So we did it for eight, nine, and ten, and it says that if we reduce by one, it would not affect the original design. It still can fulfill uh, the requirement for the. Uh, this is a finite analysis of expansion joint. Now, this company they are fabricating and design boilers. They are designing boilers. So, one of the customer asked them if they can put a bellow. So, this is a pressure vessel. Pressure vessel is something just like a, a capsule. Now, usually they do not have a spring there, but in this case. The customer insisted that they wanted to put something here. This is called a a bellow, where when the when the pressure vessel expand, to play expand, it's like a spring. So the company they do not have any kind of piece of wire. So we collaborated and we did some experiment there. Now again, I, as I mentioned earlier defining the problem is the the most important thing eh? defining the problem the loads the bounded mission so what we did is that we did the three cases whereby one is without below one is below and one is a restriction of the expansion and from there we get the results eh? you can stop me at any time <laughs> Okay, this is another case study. This is actually a bracket tension pulley. So it's been found that at this part there, somewhere in your engine there, it's always break. 
so did they. And then so the student came and they 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 trying to see modify eh? modify the design. How can we modify the design? Eh? Okay, so this uh, again the boundary condition, the load thing. So they try to put some ribs. Eh? There's a ribs there, and some they modified the ribs here, and also they put the ribs here, and they see how it could affect. Eh? How it could affect. So this is all done simulation. Eh? All done in simulation. So these are the results. Eh? These are the results. In fact, they tested a few more. There are a few more. Okay, there. So. Okay, okay. Now talking about reverse engineering, we also attempted one, which is the side mirror of a car. We try to get the cake data for that. So what we have here at Kedem, we have this one antique, eh? one antique non-contact with a camera. It's very antique, it's quite old already. So parts, that's what we have. Where if we put it, okay, the plate there, there's a, uh, a circular plate there. If we put the model there, what will happen? The plate will rotate. While the camera is catching the photo, the plate will rotate. So it's not so sophisticated. Eh? Unlike nowadays, I think, type of scanner, where you stand there and then there's a lot of camera scanning on you. This is like something like one camera, now the plate rotate. But even with that, we have done quite a number of work there. Eh? So that. So in this case, what we have from the camera, we have this another software, Polygon Editing Tools, and from there, we post it to the software called Rapid Form. But this Rapid Form is 2004. Okay. It's very, very old. Okay. So we did the work here, and then we, we write a comprehensive methodology, what we have done, right? and then we publish this in the Journal of uh, mechanical engineering and technology in Japan. So this is a, the results. These are the results. Eh? So we take a side mirror and start. We start to scan. Okay. Okay. What we did is that we compare with this one, which is based on normal measurement. We use a like caliper or that. We come up with this. So this is plotted in Katia. Katia. This is the output from the software. Uh, during that time, we have, we have not done any analysis yet. Yeah, the idea is just to get the shape, yeah, the surface. So this is one another one interesting part. Just let me show you. This is something I found in YouTube. Yeah? This is something I found in YouTube using NC's workbench and we have NC's workbench okay. it's showing the full video eh, for 10 minutes a contact analysis between CAD and this thing so if you go to YouTube eh, I already download this one you can follow step by step up till it come up with this so, so from there I gave one project to the student you remember just now the ballistic yeah, the ballistic is actually from here because from here I tried I, I, I asked the students you try to apply this so at first we were trying to model an accident towards a, a lamppost lamp post. because lamppost it, it will act something like thin structure like this lamppost but then they come up with that ballistic impact ballistic so now before this student what they do not have is the dimension of the can. And the student before they just do a circle. So for this this semester, the stu I will use that vivid <laughs> the vivid camera, ask the student to do the reverse engineering, scan this scan and get the dimension to carry on this this. So I think uh, Yeah, I think that's that's all. No. And thank you for your time.